right, thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, I was informed by Paul 15 minutes ago that this is a hopeless task, which is great, actually, because it takes the pressure off. Uh, <laughs> OK, so, <laughs> so, um, okay, so, so by, by sort of trade and training, I, uh, I, I like to study algebraic geometry. Uh, and, and I like partaking in the age-old tradition of turning hard algebraic geometry problems into impossible combinatorics. Um, so I'd like to give you a flavor of that. Um, so, so today, I'd, I'd like to talk about algebraic curves. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll fix a smooth projective algebraic curve, Riemann surface, if you prefer that language. Let's say over the complex numbers to um, belay my fears. So it's been known for a long time that, that, that one really great way to get at the geometry of an algebraic curve is, is through uh, realizations of this algebraic curve as actual projective varieties inside projective space. So the fundamental um, sort of geometric invariants are, are parameter spaces that, uh, that are, used for historical reasons, denoted WRD. So these are often called the brill noether varieties. And, and up to a fudge factor, um, you should think about this as ways to put okay, maybe just non-degenerate maps from your curve into projective space uh, of dimension r. And, let's, and we want to fix the numerical invariance, so we'll say that the degree of the, of the map is d. Okay. So we're interested in this, in, this, in this parameter space for a fixed curve. Uh, I want to know all the ways of being. Ah, sorry. Uh, so by non-degenerate, I just mean that the image should not be contained in a, in a linear space of, of smaller dimension. right? So, so otherwise, I get too many embeddings for free. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't, I don't so much mind if the map is not an embedding. So for instance, I want to allow R to be equal to one sometimes, and maybe I'll think that as close as. Okay, how about this? I'll do hook right arrow, and we'll agree that if it, if it's not possible, then it's as close to an embedding as, as possible. So if R is one, this is finite. Okay. So, so this has been. Oh, I shouldn't. I don't know why I'm doing that. So it's been known for a long time that that these these varieties are important. So for instance, a lot of classical theorems are phrased in this language. So for instance, w12 on an algebraic curve, if this is non-empty, not empty, that's, that's just the statement that your algebraic curve arises as a double cover of p1. Right, so and these are, in some sense, the simplest um, ramified double cover of p1. These are the simplest algebraic curves of genus G. They're very close to being rational uh, in some sense. So, so we know lots of things about. Hyper, so these are called the hyperelliptic curves. So we know lots of things about hyperelliptic curves. In particular, we can write down equations for them pretty explicitly. Um, and, and there are a lot of classical results in the from the 19th century that are phrased in terms of, of, of when curves do and do not have WRDs for various R and D, for various integers R and D. So for instance, um, a, a well-known fact early in the study of algebraic curves is that if um, that a curve is embedded by its, its canonical linear series if and only if it's non-hyperelliptic. Okay. Okay. So, so for okay, I should be careful with the word general. Um, okay. So the sort of seminal theorem in this area, uh, which is often called the brill noether theorem, uh, which was proved by Griffiths and Harris, naturally, um, in 1980. Um, is, is a statement about the dimension of WRD for a given R and D on a curve. Okay, so, so no, calculating the dimension of WRD on a specific curve is actually quite a task. It's not easy, uh, but, there's a, but, but guessing is not so hard. So there's, a, there's some number that is often written rho of GRD, and I'll just write it for completeness, R plus 1 times G minus T plus R. Okay, so it's not so important what, what this number is. It's a parameter count. Okay? So, so um, the condition of whether or not a curve Im admits an embedding of, uh, admits a map of, of degree d into a projective space of dimension r, there's, some, uh, there's a riemann rock calculation that you can make, and you can guess that this is true. And so what Griffiths and Harris showed was that if, if c is general in moduli, 
So the, in meaning there's a dense open set in the moduli space of curves for which this condition holds, then uh, WRDFC has this dimension where we'll agree that if this dimension is negative, uh, the scheme is empty, the WRDFC is empty. I don't want to futz around about which, which negative number the dimension is, if it's empty. OK? So this is the statement for the general curve. Um, so, so let me mention two things. Uh, so firstly, it's, it, the, the, you should ask yourself maybe, what is the difficulty here? So, so this fact was believed in, to my understanding, was believed in the 19th century. Uh, but the proof didn't appear until 1980. So, so, so what was the difficulty? Well, the difficulty is basically in this word general. So, so for general, for, OK, so for, for standard reasons, uh, this set WRDFC, or the, the set of curves for which WRDFC is equal to this number, is an open, Zariski open set. So if it's non-empty, it's going to be dense. So the difficult part is producing one curve. And producing one curve is, is, uh, is very hard. Uh, so I'll steal a line from uh, my advisor, just in case you've seen him say this before, uh, is that, that you're, you're looking for hay in a haystack, and all you're finding is needles. Um, there is a dense open set of these, but, but we can't find any. So, so one quantitative measure of, of this is that until 2016, uh, or let me say pre-2016, it was unknown if this locus of curves, this, this dense open locus of curves for which this condition held, uh, it was unknown if, uh, I'll, OK, I'll say it like this, there existed uh, uh, general curves that were defined over the rational numbers. Right? So if you're going to write down a curve, uh, you're probably going to, um, for, for arbitrary g. So, so if you're going to write down a curve, uh, probably you're going to work over the rational numbers. and and you're going to write down your curve using line bundles, using riemann rock You're going to look for sections of some line bundle, or maybe express it as an intersection of some subvarieties in a Grassmannian or a projective space. And the very fact that you can do that often makes the curve non-general. So this is the difficulty. And so Griffiths and Harris, they had an elegant uh, way of, of doing this, where they, where they degenerated the curve to the, to the boundary of the moduli space of curves and worked there, produced a singular curve that was general, and then smoothed it out. So that's the general strategy. Um, we, can, we can talk more if you, if you want to know more uh, later on. There, so ah, so this is the, this explicit one, you mean the 2016 result? Yeah, so, so it's not by degeneration. Um, it's a beautiful argument, actually. So uh, um, is it yours? No, no, it's uh, maybe, OK, so I should, <laughs> should say this is, uh, oh gosh. So this is a result of, I believe, so Arborello. Julia Saka, oh god, spelling. There's a, it's the wrong place to, to be making this mistake. Um, okay, Julia Saka, Gavi Farkash, and I'm missing an author. I'm sorry. Uh, but but, but it, it's very explicit. So they tell you, uh, look at this curve passing through this points of this degree. They can literally give you an equation. And it's, I should say, it's, it's not at all obvious that it, it even should be true. So, so if you want to look this result up, it's, uh, it's recent and it's very, it's very interesting. This is not the direction I want to go in today. So, so the other remark I want to make uh, is that outside the locus of general curves, so outside the locus of curves where WRDFC is of the expected dimension, very little is known. Right, so, so I was I was told that that I should mention a result. I, I should mention questions that I'd like answered. Um, so one thing I'm, I'm sort of relatively actively working on is, is trying to understand the geometry of WRDFC when C is special, but special within a cho chosen, th sorry, general within a chosen special way. Right? So if I give you a genus 30 curve, a general genus 30 curve is not going to be a 7 to 1 cover of P1. But if I told you it's a general such 7 to 1 cover of P1, what can you tell me about the geometry of WRD? So these are, these are the kinds of questions I would like to, I would like to attack. So. Uh, okay, I think I have. Is there a timer? Did that, does anyone? No? Uh, just for into your talk, nine, nine minutes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so where does the impossible combinator x come in? Um, well, about maybe 10 years ago now. Uh, so, um, so Matt Baker, so the combinator x uh, came about from work of. Uh, of Matt Baker and his collaborators. 
And it, it revisited the degeneration techniques of Griffiths and Harris, but in a, in a different guise. So the, the setup here is that rather than studying one curve, I'll switch my metaphors. Uh, so that's my curve now. Um, rather than studying one curve, one studies a family of curves that, say, over a punctured disk in the complex numbers, uh, the, the special fiber is, is chosen to be singular. And, and we often like to choose maximal degenerations, which is popular with, with people in this crowd. Uh, meaning that, in this case, just meaning that all components are P1. All components of the special fiber are isomorphic to P1. And so once you've made all components of the special fiber isomorphic to P1, the, the geometry in the individual components is gone. There is not much left there. And so, so the, the principle of, of conservation of difficulty would suggest that, sorry. No, no, it does, yeah. So I, that doesn't so much seem to play a role. There, there are interesting cases where, where um, one wants uh, really a zero stratum of the, of the moduli space, but, but usually P1 is enough. Uh, so, so the combinatorics arises on, on the dual graph of the special fiber. So I'll, uh, I'll explain by example here. So I'm just going to put a vertex down for, uh, for every irreducible component of the special fiber, and I'll put an edge between them when two of them meet. Okay, so somehow this, the complexity of this object you should think of as, as carrying the complexity of some piece of the complexity of the general member, uh, because, because the, the geometry of each component is, in some sense, trivial. OK, so, so what Matt noticed, uh, what Matt Baker noticed, is that there's, there's a game, there's a combinatorial game, uh, which is called chip firing. Uh, or you might have seen it as the, the sand, pile, uh, sand pile model um, on gamma. It's a discrete game on gamma. Uh, that OK, so I'm not, going to I'm not going to explain this combinatorics. Don't think there's time for that. Uh, but it's, okay, it's, it's relatively simple. Um, another thing I would like to do this semester is write an app for someone to play this game. <laughs> but that's if the math doesn't go well. Um, is it a game or probabilistic? No, no, it's a, it's a, it's a game. Yeah, it's a game. Um, so this, what, what this game allows one to do, um, define um, divisors on gamma, which are just integer combinations of the points, formal integer combinations of the, the vertices. It allows one to define the degree of such a thing, of a divisor d. And most importantly, it allows this game naturally allows one to define the rank of a divisor d. And you should very much keep in mind that on, in algebraic geometry, we have divisors of degree d and rank r giving us maps to projective space of, of degree d into projective space of dimension r. And, and the, the major thing that, that Matt noticed in this is that if I take a general member here, I can take a, 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 an element of wrd here and specialize it to an element of this graph, which is now interpretable purely in terms of this game that I've not told you about. You've got to keep some secrets. Uh, OK. So the outcome is that, so rather than finding a Brillner or general curve, uh, it turns out that um, the existence of a Brillner or general graph, in the sense that uh, with these invariants, you blindly close your eyes and replace the curve with the graph and, and hope the same statement is true. So the existence of a single Brillner or general graph implies the Brillner theorem for algebraic curves. Brillner theorem for curves, Griffiths and Harris's result. And so this was suggested as a strategy by, by Matt Baker uh, in 2008. So he conjectured that there should exist such a graph. And, and in 2012, uh, Kuhl's, Dreisma, uh, Payne, and Robeva 
they produced such a graph in every genus, which recovered the Brillner other theorem. Uh, so that's 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 uh, up to 2012. But so I've I've taken you from 1980 to 2012. There's been other math in the last five years, but uh, my office is upstairs, so maybe I'll stop there.